Once I finish with you, I'll hunt her down! You won't leave it. Is this a pain? Forgotten the sensation? What is going on everybody? It's me, Roku, back with another build. This time we're going to take a look at the best katana build you can have in version 2.0. First things first, let's talk about technical ability. You've got to max out this skill tree by the end of the game so you can have access to edge runner because without it, we can't make the most of our cyberware. So make sure that by the time you're at least reaching end game, max out this middle branch. Up next, we got reflexes. Now in reflexes, we gotta have dash right here. As a melee character, we really do gotta just dash on top of people and just be as mobile as possible. So dash is very much a necessity, max it out. And obviously because we're messing with swords and katanas, you gotta max out this right branch as well. Up next, we got body. In body, we wanna put a few points down here to make sure you can heal through some of the damage you're gonna take. And then because we're gonna have blood pump in our cyberware, you wanna get adrenaline rush, it works wonderfully well with the whole melee damage taking place style. Also get these three right here to give the adrenaline rush a bit more power. This is the bare minimum of what you want from this tree. We're putting our points right here and into this middle part to get access to this big ability that gives us crits when we're using our throwables while jumping or dashing. Like, you can just do a tiny hop and then throw your knife to just get a free crit. Don't look at this and think that you can't take these skills down here because you can, but in my opinion, they don't work too well with this playstyle. First off, the whole executing with the throwable weapon is not very good because we're doing that with our sword. So it's not good to just like switch in the middle of combat to your knife, do the execute, and then switch back just to get that little juggler buff, right? So it just doesn't mesh well with our playstyle. Parasite is great because it gives us healing from crits, but given our setup, we already have a lot of healing, so it doesn't make too much sense. Neurotoxin also doesn't really apply because most of the time we're just one shot our enemy anyways. Corrosion is amazing. Accelerated Toxin Absorption is all right with certain throwing knives. And Pay It Forward works wonderfully with the combo we got lined up. We don't really need anything from Intelligence. I just put it to six because of some of the Intelligence checks you need in the story. As for the Relics, nothing really goes too well in here with a melee build but just go for the vulnerabilities and also the optical camo now if you have 10 extra perk points from being a completionist i recommend that you put them into this branch right here in this exact order the skills i'm not taking here are all to do with grenades which we don't use in this build. all right that is it for our abilities and attributes let's get into our cyberware fix me up vic I was thinking of Okay, so the main choice you have to make in this setup is choosing which Berserk you want. Out of all the Berserks, I think two of them are the best. The Militech Berserk and the Biodyne Berserk. Now, in my opinion, for this specific build, the Biodyne Berserk works better because the difference is the Militech Berserk gives us more move speed and it gives us more damage when we're low health. So the Militech Berserk is great at just activating when you're super low health already. So you can just go out and kill everyone, do a ton of damage while you know, not dying. Now, the Biodyne Berserk is special because instead of giving us the move speed and the damage at low health, it gives us 20 extra crit chance and a whopping 100% extra crit damage. This is incredibly huge because of the amount of crit chance we already have. If we look at our character stats right here, and if you're following the exact same build that I'm going, we already have almost 60% critical chance with this setup. So if we go for the Biodyne Berserker, we're going to have 80% critical chance when we activate our Berserk. And with 8% critical chance, we're going to be critting with most of our attacks, and we're getting, like, again, a 100% extra crit damage with every single attack. That is crazy. I definitely think that the Biodyne Berserk works better with this setup, and it gives us more of a, you know, cyberware capacity to work with. Up next, we get into our face right here. To work with this whole crit setup, we got to go for the Cockatrice Kiroshi Optics. The rest of them aren't really that useful. It's all about... Tactics and scanning the enemy. <laughs> the cyberware for our hands doesn't really matter. Like, it's all for just guns, which is not that useful to us. The circulatory system here is quite important now. First off, as mentioned, we gotta get the blood pump. This works wonderfully with the adrenaline rush from before. Then heal on kill, it's pretty obvious. We're a Samurai warrior. We gotta last for a while, so that extra healing is always good to have around. The micro rotors is super important because that extra melee attack speed is really, really huge. You wanna have this thing in your cyberware. For your legs, you wanna go for the mobility option of your choice. I like the extra jump from 45 ankles, so I go for that. But you can feel free to go for the double jump, the sprinting, or whatever you want. Now, because we're running a melee setup, you gotta get a lot of armor in your intergumentary system, but your specific choices do matter. The first cyberware in this system is gonna be the car pace. Now, the car pace is actually really huge for this place now because basically speaking, you kind of block the damage in front of you with the block, but what you can't do is block bullet shots and stuff from behind you and from the sides of you. And 
a 32% extra armor is absolutely insane. It's also great against bosses because, just think about it, we're going to use our Berserk, go into the boss, fight them, burst them down, and then we're just going to run around them until our Berserk is back to go in again. What this means is that because we're running around them, we're not directly looking at them. So the car pace will come into contact as the boss tries to shoot us and kill us, so it is perfect for this place level. <laughs> Let's be honest, most of the bosses in the game will die long before. <laughs> like, they can't even survive one Berserk with this high damage setup. Up next, we got Nanoplating. Now, this one isn't really too specifically good, but because we gotta block a lot of projectiles and deal with them, Nanoplating is super useful. This also helps you against bosses, because as you're trying to damage them in melee range, they're gonna do less damage to you. In our nervous system right here, we've got to get Stabber. It's a no-brainer, really. 20% extra crit chance with blades and throwable weapons. Aside from the Stabber, you can go for my setup right here, or go for the Kurznikov. I personally decided not to go for it, but if you want to, that's up to you. The next cyberware in our nervous system that I use is Reflex Tuner. This is basically like our emergency button, so that if something bad happens and we only get one shot, we can kind of just like... You know, it slows us time enough for us to kind of reposition and rethink our strategy before we die. Lastly, we have the Neurofiber, which gives us a higher mitigation chance and higher mitigation strength. For our Skeleton, we firstly want the Dense Marrow. The extra melee damage is beautiful, and also when we have our Berserk activated, the extra stamina cost won't really matter at all. Then we want the Parabellum to give us that sweet, sweet armor. Like, it, it's single-handedly giving us almost 300 armor, which is huge. Lastly, we're getting Bionic Joints for that extra bit of armor. The arms doesn't really matter. I went for Gorilla Arms for the uh, strength checks in the game. Game, but again, not too important. For our frontal cortex, the most important thing is the axolotl. The thing that makes the axolotl so vital to this build is that you get that cooldown in the middle of Berserk. So if you have a Berserk activated and you kill someone, you get a longer Berserk duration. So as long as you're killing goons with Berserk activated, it's going to last basically forever because you get an extra second or so for every enemy you kill so it's an amazing thing you gotta have this cyberware up next we have the mechatronic core it's just extra damage against drones and robots and stuff lastly we have self ice not because it's that great but mostly because everything else is just for like ram and hacks which we're definitely not doing with this setup all right that is it for our cyberware thank you victor let's get into the weapons we'll be using for this build one of the most important choices we have to make as a samurai warrior is our katana now, in my opinion, there are two clear options, the Satori and the Byako. The Jinchumaru is often recommended as like one of the best choices, but in this specific setup, we already have enough crit chance, we don't really need it. Now, to choose between the two, you gotta think about what each is capable of. Satori works best with the Nihan knife. The Nihan causes bleeding when you throw it, it's guaranteed. And if you attack an enemy with a Satori while the enemy is bleeding, now that bleeding is turned into hemorrhaging, which means that the bleed damage basically gets brought back to you as healing, which is insane. This also works the other way around, in that if you go for the sheath attack with the Satori, you cause guaranteed bleeding, and then you can just get the healing while you're on the run with your throwing knife if you want to get away from the boss battle or something. The Byako is the more mechanically impressive weapon though, because one, it does more damage, which is pretty huge, and two, it's got higher range, which means that you're going to be able to clear rooms out a lot faster with Byako. The Byako is also good because you're no longer tied down to the Nihon. Instead of Neon, you can go for another Throwing Knives, it's up to your preference, but in my opinion, the best option is the Blue Fang. The Blue Fang makes it so that if you throw it at someone and then attack them with your sword, it will stun them, which can be really, really useful in a lot of situations. In my personal opinion, the Byako is a lot better, but if you like the combo between the Nihon and the Satori, you can go for that as well, or you can just do what I do <laughs> and use both of them. <laughs> The last slot doesn't really matter at all because all we need is our throwing knife and our katana. So what you can do is go for a combo weapon like the Comrade's Hammer, which you can use with the uh, Headhunter Knife. So what you do is throw the Headhunter Knife and then shoot them with the Comrade's Hammer for 300% extra damage for some spicy one-shots. You could go for a nice independent pistol like Amnesty or any Overture. Death and Taxes is also an amazing option. Or you could just not bother with guns and go for two throwing knives in that. If you have a big boss target, you throw both your throwing knives in and then you're going for the kill with your katana. Alright, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm currently doing a playthrough of the new Phantom Liberty DLC on the channel right now, so if you want to go check it out, click on the playlist on your screen right now. Or if you want to watch me play the base game to its completion, that playlist will be on the screen as well. You can also find both links in the comment section and description, along with more additional information. Alright, that's pretty much it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.